này chỉ mở page bong miền kinh lái này the reflection kinh này mở Okay, we are now going live. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we are now. As planned, uh, we, our event start at uh, 11 and it will end at 12. And our speaker is already here. We have two speakers. Uh, and uh, before I introduce them, first of all, I would like to thank those who are part partaking in this uh, event. And uh, this time we bring uh, environments related and energy related topic, I would say, uh, on hydropower. We try to, we will be trying to find out how uh, renewable energy like hydropower is, is having a role in, in future energy transition or whether it, it has not, uh, there has no any role in that or whether to, uh, we also try to find out whether uh, this is really uh, the energy that would be sustainable or something like that. And uh, first of all, uh, I also would like to uh, stress a little bit on the reflection. The reflection is a, uh, is a program that aim to provide uh, space for all uh, young Cambodians to uh, share their knowledge experience and also uh, the field of expertise. So different topics have been raised and have been uh, uh, brought in. And, and, and we also aim to uh, involve many different scholar, young people and so on. So you, you can actually follow up our page to get to know more about this program. But this time, uh, it is a little bit uh, interesting because uh, our, our, our topic is on energy issue. Uh, it is important, but I think uh, we haven't discussed much uh, so far. So I hope that uh, by uh, inviting these two speakers, uh, uh, understanding on hydropower uh, can be uh, promoted and people who wish to understand that can eventually uh, uh, learn about it as well. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone. And uh, first of all, I would like to uh, introduce you to our uh, guest speaker. And uh, we have two speakers here. First of all, we have uh, Mr. Ham Odong. Uh, Odong. Hi. Hello, Nisai. <laughs> yes. Very good morning, Odong. Very okay. nice background. I think uh, you are somewhere in your hometown, right? Thank you. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, that, yes, that's, that's great. Yeah. So, so because our discussion will be on energy, Odong, so far, he, he has been uh, working in uh, environmental consultancy and, and also environmental analyst. He holds a master's degree in sociology and anthropology, he, measuring in rural development. Uh, he also has uh, over, I think, 10 year experience uh, and have been immersing in environment, human rights investigation, advocacy, 
and so on. Uh, then he also tried to uh, get involved in addressing uh, many issues, uh, especially related to controversial uh, hydropower and fossil fuel in Cambodia, especially in Great Term Mekong sub-region. Thank you, Adam, for taking part in our program. Thank you, my pleasure. Yeah, so our first speaker already uh, introduced and now uh, move to our second speaker, uh, Ms. Ursu Palkon. Palkon, very good morning. Good morning to you, Bong. You can call me with Palkon. Okay, So it's not my middle name. <laughs> I see. So you don't need a middle name, right? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Just, just uh, Palkon. So Palkon, yeah. thank you for taking part in our events. And now uh, I think I would like to introduce Palkun to you all. Palkun currently is a clean energy engagement coordinator at Energy Lab uh, uh, Asia or Cambodia, Cambodia, right? Correct, Bong, correct. Okay, energy that's Lab, right. Cambodia. Yeah, Energy Lab Cambodia. She joined Energy Lab Cambodia in 2020. Uh, quite new, right? Uh, one year. Yeah. So yeah, yeah one year. Yeah. yeah, I graduated last year as well. So comparing yeah. to Bang Odom, I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm recent. <laughs> <laughs> so so Pagun is, I think you graduated from the US, right? What what, what major did did you take back then? Yeah, well, uh, thank you for the question. So I graduated from Lafayette College, uh, majoring in engineering studies. So it's more like a little bit of technology, a little bit of public policy, a little bit of sustainability. So everything is on top of one another. I see. That's why you, you fit for this work and also you fit for this discussion. Yeah. Thank you Wong, for yeah. having me here. Yeah. And I, I think you have your work is mainly focusing on uh, engaging with youth and raise awareness on clean energy opportunity and also uh, some sort of that, uh, particularly for, for Cambodia. And uh, I think this is very important work uh, because uh, clean energy is, is, is actually a, a critical uh, topic that we all have to focus on. And with you working on this, I, I, I believe that many Cambodian youth can, can, can get in, uh, involved and, and widely engaged, I think, yep. Exactly, boy, yep. 100 would agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So now our two speakers are already here and uh, ready to engage in our discussions. And uh, our topic, ladies and gentlemen, today is on hydropower. Hydropower actually, so I would give all of you a brief of uh, introduction uh, to our topic and uh, a brief of information related to that before we jump into our conversation. So I will have, a, I think, a list of questions for you all. And I will have a follow-up question after, especially during our conversation. So uh, rapid developments, as well as a, a rising population in, in the regions, not only in Cambodia, have driven a huge demand in energy. Uh, and also, this can be seen in, 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 in many parts of, of, of the world. Hydropower is one of the main or the biggest source of energy and then also classify a renewable energy as well. That's why it becomes so much uh, uh, popular, but it's not just now, but it has been popular for many years. You have seen uh, many countries still rely on it. In Cambodia in particular, uh, I think uh, based on the uh, data from uh, Ministry of Mine and Energy, uh, this hydropower continue to be predominant, accounting for over 45%, I think, uh, of a total energy generation in 2019, but I haven't had an updated document or data on that. So I, I, I raised the 2019 uh, report. Over 40% is quite huge. And uh, despite uh, this huge share of electricity production, uh, the drawbacks have been raised uh, by people, including environmental impacts, as well as intensifying climate impact as well. So we, we see that uh, a climate change also becoming a very, uh, uh, I think it is a hot topic and it affects many dimensions of our society, including energy production. So moving uh, from uh, fossil fuel or this, this, this energy, if it's not classified as clean, it would be a great to have. So uh, we have seen that the demand in energy uh, uh, encourage uh, more production of, 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 of energy from hydro, from fossil fuel, and so on. So 
Uh, without further ado, I, I would have one question for, for, for all speaker. I think you will, you will need to answer this, uh, the same question. First of all, why hydropower consider as a renewable? First of all, I would, send, I would, I would like to point this question to uh, Paul Kun first. Uh, thank you, Wong. So um, I think by definition, uh, renewable energy is the source of energy that we can use and benefit from. Uh, and it can be replenished over time. So it, meaning it won't run out. For example, okay. water that can be used for hydropower, it won't yep. run out because it's used for water. Solar power, solar technology, we use the sun to power the, uh, to generate electricity. So the solar won't run out. Same thing with wind power. Mm. But that hydro energy is considered renewable energy, but large hydro can, be, can have a significant impact on the environment and people. So it's not always considered clean, green, or sustainable, but it's considered as renewable. Renewable, okay. Yeah. So, Odong, uh, you have anything to share or yes, the same thing that you would like to say? Yeah, basically, Paul could have covered it nicely, the definition, and I just wanna uh, include that the, or uh, 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 emphasize the term green energy and sustainable energy that very important. Because when you talk about uh, uh, um, renewable energy, it could be green, but at some level, for example, when they develop light scale hydropower, they always compare it to fossil fuel. Of course, mm -hmm. it, it's greener, but it doesn't mean it is, uh, 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 I mean, the, the questions around sustainability is still up there. Yep. Especially if you include uh, not only the natural ecosystem, but also the social, economic, and political factor that become way more complex. Yeah. I see. Thanks thank for your explanation, both Spokun and uh, and uh, Dom. Uh, but but uh, given that it has so many uh, different uh, impacts on environment, on socials, on 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 ecosystem and so on. But why this, this hydropower become very popular source of energy? Uh, I think uh, we have been harnessing this energy for century. Human have been doing so, harnessing energy from, from, from river, from, from the, the waterway and so on. So my, my question would be to Adam first. Well, um, if we look back, let's say a hundred years ago, when the industrial revolution uh, uh, dominate the world, then we can see the boiler phoenix, or we can say the uh, fossil fuel power plant are the main source of energy and electricity. Yeah. At the same time, um, hydropower emerged itself to be an alternative back then. And yet yeah, the, the same uh, uh, point that raised, uh, it, it is cleaner than fossil fuel. Plus, back then, there was limited scientific study onto the, you know, all the uh, impact into uh, different factors related to hydropower. I think that that uh, become uh, one of the, the things that I could think of. And later on, until now, you can see the price of hydropower. If you look at the price, so uh, uh, coal basically is still uh, high. But yeah. hydropower is kind of not uh, uh, rising, or it's still uh, similar to the other sort of renewable energy, such as solar and uh, um, wind or biomass. But that is not include uh, like the, the cost of relocation and then environmental service, so on and so forth. Yeah. That could be uh, the next level of uh, discussion. Yeah. I see. Pokun? Uh, Adam have raised that the price and how we have been uh, using it for century because of less alternative and so on would be the, 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 the cost of making this hydropower become so popular among the other energy sources. Uh, is, is there anything you want to add or you agree with Adam in particular? She is frozen. The internet. I think internet problem with popcorn. Yeah, well, I. <laughs> okay, uh, you're back. Oh no! All right, am I back? Okay. <laughs> That's cool. okay. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm sorry. All right. So I agree with one of them points on like uh the changes in landscape between fossil fuels and we moving forward to hydro. 
Yep. But I think also in Cambodian context, and maybe this ring truth with other countries that have abundant source of water as well, that they mm -hmm. can use this kind of energy to generate the electricity to meet the demand. And that's when the demand come in, like Bong is always at the beginning about like, uh, the demand has been increasing in electricity sector, not in the electricity sector, but transport sector and other sectors as well. So for Cambodia, if you look at the EAC report in 2020, or even before that, we'll see that every year the energy increase percent share between 20%, 16%. It dropped in 2020 because of the COVID, but it will be, you know, increasingly in, going to be bigger and bigger demand. I and see. that's when the renewable energy come in and help generate those needs. Um, and I just want to touch on the point where Bong Nisei raised on the percentage shares of renewable yeah. energy. Yeah. Uh, so back in 2018, uh, half of the renewable energy, 49% actually came from hydro. Yeah. Uh, however, there will be a shift. So according to uh, His Excellency Kaurakunat, the head of EDC, Akisti yeah. uh, Kamuchi uh, he gave a presentation in September, if I don't remember it correctly, yeah. 2020 last yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, in 2030, will be more fossil fuels than mm -hmm. hydropower. Nice. So we'll, in the future, we'll, 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 that's the plan. We'll see the shift. And yep. <laughs> so uh, yeah. that's, uh, that's quite something interesting there. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Thank you. I, yeah, I think it seemed like we haven't discussed yet uh, how this hydropower works. We, we see from uh, the middle size or the, the small size uh, hydro dam to uh, a largest one uh, being constructed on the river and at the waterway. I think it's, it's just a very simple question, but I think some people might need to know exactly how it works. Uh, I, uh, one of you can, 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 can explain this, how hydropower work in particular. Adam or Parkun, uh, you all can uh, explain us in this way. I will let the- I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, I think Adam can answer just because actually I've never seen a big hydro dam in my real life. Yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've seen yeah. one small, but not yeah. a big one, but I think Adam will have more experience to share now. Uh, okay, yeah. Adam, me, please take, yeah. take a job of the engineer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Um, basically, we have different scale. Um, yeah. if, if you're talking about a smaller one, you just need a, a, a motor or a dynamo, like say, put it in the uh, flowing uh, water, yeah. then it can uh, uh, generate electricity that way. But if the, the bigger scale, bigger, I, if by definition, it, it could be various, but uh, more than one megawatt it could be considered as a, 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 a light scale because in, in the uh, Cambodia law, uh, the environmental impact assessment, if it's yeah. less than uh, one megawatt, you don't have to do the uh, environmental impact assessment as they consider it small. Let's mm -hmm. take that definition. What is the light scale one? You need a turbine, you know, in order to spin. Uh, the turbine, you need water uh, current. And in order to make the water current strong enough to, to, to spin the turbine, you need to, to basically block the river. Uh, that's why when you create dam, then you, you create a big reservoir behind dam wall, the wall of the dam. It, it can be huge as the, the, the leg, something. If you, if you ever seen the lower sea sand to dam, you can see it, it's flat almost uh, 30,000 uh, hectares. Um, you know, forest and uh, people village, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And there are two, I, I, I believe there are, um, based on what I, I know of, there are two kinds of uh, 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 hydropower that I have seen. One is we call storage reservoir, where you, you store the water like temporarily for a long time. Yeah. That the, the reservoir is stay there uh, uh, all the time. Uh, except for when you have too much water or flooding a rainy season, then the dam is wanting to release water, then a huge amount of water, sometimes flood downstream. And the other kind we call runoff river, where you don't have to store water all the time, but you still need to do that sometimes. Uh, that yeah. is, uh, for example, the Don Zong Dam in Laos is basically the uh, runoff river. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the uh, uh, scientists from the company say the runoff river is, is uh, uh, I mean, much better than the storage one. And if, anyway, it, it impacts differently. That that uh, the the different definition of of uh, I mean the the uh, brief you know um, how how it works in terms of uh, that. Mm -hmm. Thank, thank you, Dom. But, but uh, my follow up question, because you raised that a smaller one uh, doesn't require uh, some sort of study on the impact of environment. Does that mean there's no impact at all, or we don't just see I mean, the significant ones, the impact of it? They all will impact, but it, the, the scale is uh, much smaller. Especially the interesting one is it is uh, managed by the local community. For example, I have uh, I mean that Cambodia we also have th those kind of community when the the national grid hasn't arrived then people find a way to to uh, produce their own way of uh, uh, producing electricity and because people are living in in the community in the environment so they must be very uh, curious about the impact and if for example the significant impact is for when you store or you you block the river uh, the, the water for for a long time that is a big issue because you you will change the water flow the water regime the hydrology are changing the the, the ecosystem are changing especially downstream uh, our community or, or environment also need water that 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 also uh, include the sediment transport that is very important for the vegetation and so on that the other important aspect is the fish migration if you we talk about a bigger a bigger uh, river or stream like mekong it's very important because uh hundreds of fish species are, are migratory fish so it travel all the way from totally up up to the uh, uh sea pandan area in lao in tributary but a smaller stream is not that you know uh, a serious uh, ecological spot. Then we can see that it's smaller, but, but still impact are still there. But it can be manageable by especially the local community. Yeah. I see. Thank you, Dom, for very well explaining. Around the world, renewable energy use is on the rise. And uh, next question will be to Palkun. Palkun, uh, I think uh, Dom already raised some important. Uh, uh, elements and how it impacts uh, ecosystem. We talk about sediments, we talk about ecosystem, given that the small size or the large size of that, regardless of it. So uh, Parkun, uh, can you, we, we talk about uh, the, the advantages because it, it might be cheap, it might be easy to, to, to harness electricity, but uh, uh, what about the detrimental uh, impact on environments and social impact and so on? Uh, anything that you, you you think the most important or the most significant uh, effects uh, created by this hydropower on on every aspect of the uh, not not only environments not only social but 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 anything you see the the biggest impact yeah i think that every impact that hydro has has significant uh, impact significantly on the livelihood of people the environment yeah. and social as well so let's let's talk about like for example the cost of climate change, uh, yeah. the emissions CO two. So like Bong Udom said about the reservoir that's been saying long time the flooded. So the trees that tied up to the carbon like heavy carbon dioxide will be uh, decomposed at the bottom of the reservoir, and yeah. it's not just CO two that will be emit, but will be methane too. And methane is one of the emissions that you know account for a bigger impact more than CO two. Yeah. See. Um, yep. So that's one thing, CO2. Uh, other thing is the CO2 emitted from hydro is the construction process. Um, so use of concrete, transportation or construction material, those things will also emit CO2 as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, to build up on Bong Udom point on ecosystem uh, and the change of water flow. So the downstream will have the most impact. So the people who live downstream. Uh, so, for example, like Bo Dom can build up on this point as well, like the, some, some board dam that proposed across Megong at uh, uh, Kroche would have uh, changed the flows into the Donetsk and had a, significant, had a significant impact on 
people who depend on those lively uh, on those nest apps. Uh, so what impacts on their livelihood, their social life and welfare. Um, and not to mention that uh, the relocations of people who lived at the construction site. So it depends on the site as well. If the site is big, then people need to evac uh, need to relocate to other place so that they cannot you know be around that uh, construction area. Yeah. Mm. Well, Dom, uh, do you want to add anything? Uh, maybe you want to add something more that you haven't discussed in your previous uh, uh, comments. Well, I well, just go back to the first question, like why it's so popular. So, I mean, think there are always something that are not written down or, or announced. For example, like if you build a big, big hydropower, you will need a reservoir, right? So what happening during, like, like for say during the construction process, then it, it's going to be, uh, if it is a, let, let's talk about lower states down to them. So there are forest area upstream in the reservoir area. So the com company basically uh, uh, get commission in order to clear those forests. Then where, 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 are, the, where are those timber going? then it, 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 it an opportunity to earn revenue out of that as well. Then, you know, when it's to do with the relocation, sometime uh, the local community did not receive information uh, 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 at the right time. So there are opportunity, opportunists uh, who, 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 who kind of take the opportunity to grab the land or to, to below the price of the land out of proportion because say it's going to be flooded anyway so just give up your land and stuff so this is based on experience and then um there are also uh the 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 interesting uh benefits around licensing because it's not only one company the turbine could be from german from you know austria uh, 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 but the the semen and then um, other stuff, the, the construction material could be coming from different sources, then it give uh, open up different opportunities, especially in a country where the rule of law is, is, is poor, then that provide a lot of uh, a chance for opportunities to, to, you know, grab money that <laughs> behind the scenes. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Dom and uh, I think uh, there are a lot, there's a lot of things we can uh, touch upon in this part, especially on the, the impacts that hydropower can have on the people. But uh, even though there, there's, a, there's a problem, but we have seen that um, back, back to Paul Kun part, Paul Kun also said that uh, the energy plan, so the decline in the shares of hydropower in our energy uh, strategy or energy energy share and so on would indicate that uh, Cambodia as a developing as a developing country can can understand the impacts of this uh, potentially I, I'm, I'm not really sure if this is this the case but I would like to know from you uh, with the declines of, of, of uh, hydropower share in in the, the in the total energy uh, production in our in our country would indicate that the governments and the other stakeholders really understand the, the, this kind of impact and then move away from it, or it's just the change of, of energy landscape with the availability of the other source of energy making us moving away from it. Uh, my question would first to Paul Kun. If you want me to rephrase this, I can, I'm happy to do so, yeah. Mm, uh, that's a uh, good question. <laughs> Uh, so what's going on in decisions making? Uh, I'm, I, I'm not quite sure what's happening, but I can give you a brief landscapes globally, if that's yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. So if we look at the shift globally in electricity generation projections, so according to uh, BNEF, uh, uh, Bloomberg New Energy Finance, it's a really yeah. uh, good organization, they, they do some projections and predictions uh, around the world. So in 2030, we'll see about 43% 40, share of renewable energy, which most of them comes from hydro. However, in 2050, we'll see 69% come from renewable energy. Interestingly, 56% comes from solar and wind. Uh, 
So I will say in the energy landscape globally, uh, yeah. hydro, we'll see less and less and we'll see <laughs> more and more of solar and wind. I see. Um, but looking in Cambodia a little bit, uh, well, the, the price is becoming a little expensive too. Just recent year, it's around 7.9 cent per kilowatt hour. So around 360 real in Khmer. Uh, it's actually a little bit uh, expensive than the last year. Yeah. So we'll see that the global landscape is moving away from hydro. The cost yeah. is a bit higher than before. So I would say that Cambodia might look at uh, different options for our energy planning. Uh, but in terms of decision making, uh, I'm not yet. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, for hope I answer for... your question. More. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you you really answer my question. The change in energy landscape, the availability, and the decline in price of the renewable energies. Oh, all over the world, from wind, from solar, also the points. But Odom, I think uh, Falcon also reminded me when it comes to policy making process, the blackout in 2019, we all felt, I think, uh, the, the, the impact of the highly depending on hydropower, the collapse of, 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 of Lao hydroelectric dam in 2018 also give us another question. Uh, this this also combined with the the increased extreme weather events driven by a uh, uh, climate crisis. So, do you think that we learn from this problem and we try to reconsider on our energy strategy and plans to in, integrate more clean energy rather than depending on hydropower? But of course, we still rely on uh, the fossil fuel, the dirty energy. Well, my imagination, my wish, could be contrast to what is uh, practical, for example, in Cambodia. But yeah, what I want to say is like, yeah, um, at least um, I, I agree that we, we shouldn't have more dam, and then at least we do not add more dam, especially uh, uh, follow up on Falcon Point on the uh, uh, methane emission from the reservoir area. So it, it, it is quite nasty at the first year of the operation so which means if you have more of them you will have that kind of methane emission more and more and then if you understand methane the, the differences between methane and uh, carbon dioxide you know even methane have a longer uh, shorter life it's just about 10 or 20 years in the atmosphere but the, in, the impact is you know um, um, three times uh, stronger than the uh, carbon dioxide, you know, when it uh, contributes to the climate change. Um, so at least we, 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 we should prevent uh, uh, new dams. And yeah. I mean, if you're lucky enough, when the policymakers start thinking about decommissioning the existing dam, it has to be done gradually. We cannot do it overnight because, you know, almost 50% for example, in Cambodia, come from large scale hydropower, then we have to deal with the electricity demand and supply. So it has to be done uh, gradually. Uh, it's not only the uh, technological issue that we need to deal with. For example, like uh, we do have solar, we do have wind and biomass, and, and there are uh, technological demonstrations of the success and viability. But also we have to deal with the employment, the economic aspect, the uh, people behavior, and all of this, you know, uh, energy uh, policy landscape that we have to create some kind of new needs, uh, at least uh, to, to, to uh, be clear on the uh, revenue and um, employment as well. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Thank you, Dom. Back to Paul, Paul Kuhn again. Uh, we, we already talked about the impact it has on uh, every aspect of our life, but I think uh, hydropower still remain and uh, because the existing ones still continue to generate more and more power for, for people who are consuming the energy. So is there any way that we can make hydropower more sustainable and, and less harmful to the environment. Uh, is there anything that you would think of would make this possible? 
Thank you, Bong, for the question. So I think there are studies and frameworks around the world introduced to control the amount of CO2 that produce uh, from the hydro, uh, let's say like the way this life uh, yeah. cycle. Yeah. Um, so for example, the uh, I think the Climate Bond Initiative, they developing a framework that put some standards on the company or the investor that do those kind of projects. So they they will give like a certifications, for example. So the project must be approved to meet the certain, certain standard of the CO2 that emit. Uh, for example, like certain amount per kilowatt hour, for example. So they introduce standards, they introduce incentives to those kind of investor uh, and to meet the Paris Agreement uh, also. So there are certain standards and framework they introduce around the world. Um, and I think while this seems like a short-term solution, uh, many countries around the world are looking for alternative solutions already, for example, yeah. like solar and wind. So again, coming back to more cleaner and sustainable, more sustainable energy sources. So uh, they're not just sticking to one renewable options, options but they're looking for alternatives already. Mm -hmm. And still sticking up to hydros, uh, Bong Udong can jump onto this. Uh, there's technology called pumped hydro storage. So uh, they, while we still have some hydros that are exist in Cambodia, we can, you know, use them, utilize them as uh, the giant battery to complement with other sources, for example, solar and wind. So how it's uh, how it works is you have like an upper reservoir and a the down one. So when we use when we need electricity, it's uh, acts like the normal hydropower. So it's yep. coming downhill and generate electricity. But when there is an excess power from, let's say, solar and wind, when uh, nobody using them, it's, you know, it's uh, pumping the water from down to the upper. So uh, using the excessive power. So we still can have hydro, but we, you, we can utilize it as a pump hydro storage if we can. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, you know, it's visible in Cambodia, but it's, it's worth something we can look into uh, if we think about this planning, yeah, in the long term. Yeah, thank Paul Kun. Thank you. But to a dom, uh, I think uh, Paul Kun already mentioned uh, there might be possible way of making less uh, harmful, but you're advocating for no more dam construction, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. Because, um, it, because it is really hard to, to get this into practice right. and, and also make it possible, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, this concept of uh, sustainable hydropower have been uh, here for a while. And then just yep. add into Falcon points. So there are a few other important aspects to look at, which, was, which has been quite difficult to make it sustainable. First, when you build a dam right in the middle of the river, you have to deal with the fish migration. You know, uh, like say, for example, in, in, in well, there have been uh, uh, efforts, especially in Europe, in the US, in order to build this kind of uh, ladder and a fish elevator, maybe even more fancy than human in some areas. Like, but it's for like salmon fish, which is the naturally jump quite high. But it, it use the same technology to address this kind of issue in the Mekong, where the fish cannot jump that high, perhaps has a uh, shorter leg. Um, so this is one of the issues that we haven't seen a uh, successful demonstration scientifically anywhere. Um, very or very few, and it's happened in, in uh, uh, South Africa, only two cases out of 100 cases that the uh, fish ladder success. And the other thing is to do with the sediment. When you, for example, let's say it is the uh, storage reservoir, uh, a dam where you have you have to store the, the, the water in the reservoir for a long time. So you can literally uh, 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 share or release the water. But the thing that cannot go is the sediment. So um, the sediment is very important uh, because downstream, we can see what what are the things that need sediment. For example, like the farming, the vegetation along the river, also the river bank that need the the sediment. Without sediment, it become you know the river bank erosion that we have seen now happen quite quite 
uh, 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 frequently. So this is the second thing, uh, and I I also understand that there have been technology that is uh, recently introduced around the sediment flushing technology, but it is still to be seen, you know, in terms of uh, effectiveness. And then the the other thing it is social aspect in terms of relocation, in terms of spiritual side of the community. Uh, let's say some area like Lower Sesan, two instant dry area, you have to deal with the indigenous community where they have their own way of living. You cannot just take them from one place and yeah. leave them uh, and let them live in the area where they never used to do it. And then you need to relocate their spiritual, it's not possible. Let's say the spiritual forest, spiritual area, you cannot relocate everything. And you know, the compensation is still a big question. Like how you compensate, is that uh, a fair and just compensation? Because you not only compensate the house price, the, you know, I know they put a price on the tree, on coconut, on mango, but how about the timing that children losing from going to school, you know, the, 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 the memory of the area. This is quite unquantifiable, you know. And then I think just these three aspects, it is difficult, very difficult enough to answer the questions around the sustainable hydropower. And then I just want to add last point. In, in, in the meantime, the, I know the, it's called the International Hydropower Agency. Yeah. Um, because I understand that in terms of climate funding, it's scattering. Yeah. It, 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 the, the hydropower industry is losing their, their, their financial resource globally. Then now they are holding series of the call Global Hydropower Congress in order to come up with a declaration called St. Josie, the declaration in order to explain the sustainable hydropower, why it's sustainable. So it is happening until I think 24. Then they will take this declaration to the, uh, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, COP26. Yep. We have a new, a new president now. So basically, this international hydropower industry, they want to convince the new president of the, 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 uh, of the uh, UNFCCC, hey, we have a sustainable model of hydropower, so give you some money, Sim uh, just simply like that. But at the same time, we have a, a, a campaigner, international and global campaigner, who are uh, producing their petition as well in order to uh, uh, come up with their counter argument into that declaration. I will share the link later if, for example, Energy Lab interested to to join endorsing that petition, I would be happy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Dom, for 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 a very uh, interesting take on this on this issue. And then uh, the thought the thought uh, the answer from you is that saying no to more hydro dams. Yes, there should be there should be this. There shouldn't be uh, more constructions of the hydro dam on waterway, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. Okay. Back to Falcon again. Uh, I think, of course, because of the, the demand and energy will continue to grow from, from day to day and the future will see the, the, the dramatic rise in this energy. Of course, the role of hydropower may be still relevant. It won't be... Uh, we won't be end any time soon because the existing one, some country might move on uh, uh, contracting of this energy. But to you, do you see any role of this hydro power in, in energy transition in particular? It's not only Cambodia in particular, but global scale. Maybe you have seen this uh, as a, the role it can have in the future. Can you repeat the questions again? Well, uh, I don't think I yeah, just, just, just want to know from you what should be the, what will be the role? Do, do you see that this this hydropower has any role? Because we talk about impact, we talk about uh well, Adam so far also advocated for no more hydro, but of course in context of Cambodia, there must be a lot more attention on this, but at a global scale, because it's still relevant in many years, uh, taking into account that there will be more and more energy demand. 
So it requires some other country constructing more hydropower. But is there any role this hydropower have in energy transition in particular? Do you see it or you? you, you yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you, Wong. Thank you. All right. So I, I think uh, I al already mentioned this earlier as well in terms of yeah. the global scale and the shift and everything's from cleaner energy, like solar and wind. Uh, I think in the future, uh, the role of hydro will be smaller and smaller. It varies from country to country for sure, yeah. because like different countries, uh, gift of nature uh, varies from country to country. For example, like we Cambodia have abundant source of solar and wind. Why not utilize us to the maximum? Other countries have uh, other source of energy, renewable energy, such as geothermal, for example. So they might utilize those yep. energy sources more than others. Uh, but for the hydro, I think we'll see smaller and smaller, and the role will be uh, less significant comparing to other technologies. Once, like Wong Odom said, is um, just comparing the environmental impacts that each technology has, but then also social impacts. It's, it's you know, unmeasurable, like the livelihood of community, the welfare, um, yes, and all those things. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's what I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and also, uh, if we look at the investment, for example, uh, like a lot of countries around the world yeah. uh, moving their financing scheme to more like cleaner, for example, solar and wind, but less on hydro and coal and fossil fuels, it has sort of things. So they're looking options that make economic sense also, not just, you know, the um, those things are just at the aspects of environment and other uh, social impacts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, I, I would have one uh, follow-up question for you. You also cited, uh, Guy uh, the, the head of uh, uh, they say the, the electricity uh, of Cambodia. Uh, he he also mentioned that uh, in the future we will see the the the, the smaller share of hydropower, even smaller than uh, the fossil fuel. So uh, here's I would jump to uh, renewable energy. It's not only renewable, but I, I talk about clean energy here. So mm -hmm. as a, a, an observer, as uh, someone who is working on advocating for more clean energy in, in our energy transition, so, so what type of clean energy you want to see more investment during in and want to be, you want to see more further uh, promoted in the future. So this is linked to our renewable energy, but I touch upon more on, on clean energy in particular. So in Cambodia context, mm -hmm. as an observer, you might have something to say on this. Mm, yeah, thank you, Wong. So, uh, like I mentioned earlier too, like Cambodia has abundant uh, source of wind and solar. So, solar technology specifically has much more low, lower impact on the environment. It doesn't have uh, direct emissions during its operations yeah. uh, comparing to hydro. So, we it we do we do we do, <laughs> sorry we do okay. not need to mine sources uh, mm. such as coal and and oil. We don't have to transport the the coal and oil to the power stations, yep. it doesn't disrupt life uh, of any kind. It's environmental friendly. Yep. And more importantly, in recent years, the cost of solar and wind has been dropping drastically. Yep. Uh, yeah, just recently in Cambodia, it's down to 3.877 cents per kilowatt hour. So it's half the price of hydro. So yep. it's make economic sense. And uh, so making these types of investments more attractive to investors, not just in Cambodia, but around the world as well. Um, and then, um, you know, it's renewable energy, it's create more jobs, like new projects, need new, more people, more investments uh, on uh, human capacity. So that will comes to uh, as increase in employment and also the GDP uh, growth as well. Uh, so as an observer in clean energy sector, I would yep. say I would like to see more and more of solar and wind and yep. uh, yeah, energy Are you for, optimistic? for Cambodia. Yeah. Are you <laughs> highly optimistic about this? I, I, I think plan can change. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Plan can change. And I think that Cambodia is not too late to look at other options that are yep. 
not only uh, economic, economically viable to us, but environmentally, em environmentally good for our society, for our people. And let's talk about climate change too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> because right. other sources like as fossil fuels, they emit CO2 yeah. and we need to look at other options that are cheap, affordable and good for people to, you know, live on the, on the earth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks Falcon. You, you bring Thank in you. A, a good uh, uh, reason why we should focus on clean energy more than other sources of energy the uh, fossil fuels, uh, coal power, and so on. Back to Wondong. I think uh, you have been advocating for an end to fossil fuel, uh, but it still remains, uh, of course, because of, we have seen more constructions of coal power plant here and so on. And uh, we still consider as, a, as a, a very, of course, because you're cheap, and some people, I, I, I also encounter with people say of oh, developing, developing part, uh, sorry, developing country like Cambodia might have very little option when it comes to moving forward or leapfrog uh, or unlocks the potential in other sources with lacks of investment. So, so the back all in this development still remains, especially in energy source. Is there anything you want to say it is possible to move away from this fossil fuel? It's not just a dream for a developing country unless we, we didn't take action at all. So I, I believe that you will have something to say beside me because I'm not an expert in this, but I see it is possible. Well, just similar point to Paul Tun have raised. Yep. You know, actually it is not a dream, for example, in terms of solar, wind and biomass. There have been studies yep. economically and technologically proving that it's possible. Yep. And the, the, the rest of the thing is the we're looking forward for enabling policy in terms of energy sector. That you know, political will is very important. If you yeah. don't believe that it's gonna work, it's not going to work. Yeah. We have to start from one, two, three, right? You cannot yeah. say, okay, I agree that we need a lot of we need a large amount of uh, uh, energy, but let 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 make it transparent. How much you really need? Yeah. You not can just tell every year you have this much amount of energy that you need to deal with but how you calculate it and then which sector is it going and that are we can everyone in the country convinced that we have to go for the industry sector garment factory sector then free culture for example so yeah it's not only energy but we have to be transparent on that and information sharing and stuff um the other thing is the uh, responsibi uh, responsibility of the individual consumer. You know, we are still in a in a, a country where um, everybody, most of the people are waiting to see, are waiting to use. Instead, um, we call the term we call a uh, consumer, so that you just make sure you have money and you you, you purchase electricity. What we wait, there is a, a, a word in between. Maybe people are aware of the word prosumer. Prosumer means you produce what you consume. You know, like, okay, let's say you have a solar rooftop. You have a roof. At least you, the, your home has a roof. Then buy the solar. And then you need, you, you, you consume from there. And then if people can do that, whether there is a supporting policies around, for example, hey, during the night time, I use electricity from the grid, but during the daytime, I have my own solar. So we need something that, you know, can be, for example, let's say a net metering or stuff or fit in tariff that can give us incentive or encouragement to do so. So I mean, we need the, the uh, 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 commitment from individual citizen and political will from the decision maker that also thing. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Adam. For, for, for us, this is also a good thing uh, to talk about why it is difficult for us to, to get the done, uh, political will, uh, citizen commitment, and so on. I think we have like around uh, eight minutes left and so, but I still have one more question to Paul Kun. Uh, when it comes to individual levels, it's also uh, require a lot of work. I think you have been doing it because you are, you are advocating, promoting understanding of the energy issue, renewable, why is important. I think this is very critical uh, to bring a change in, in, in their mindset and how we can uh, support uh, 
the more consumption of this energy or uh, it's only happened when they understand much but to you in particular how do you see the change of understanding among the people when it comes to renewable energies or sorry clean energy in particular like so far there are still people not really well aware of it and uh, there are some people who used to maybe uh, used to um, uh, uh, use uh, solar panel and so on, but they say that they face some difficulty. They still want something better than that, and so. But it's not. I'm not really sure. But it's just what I have heard. But to you in particular, uh, what about the awareness and about the, the understanding of this amongst our citizen? Is that a problem? Yeah. I think uh, from my one day experience so far, <laughs> uh, people are getting more and more. Uh, uh, educated on this kind of issues on yeah. clean renewable energy. Um, I think we still have some works to do, more yeah. works to do actually. Some days are harder some <laughs> to educate on this stuff. Um, but I think people are more aware of this uh, than let's say like 10 years ago. Um, yeah. Um, and uh, I think uh, like from my experience, like energy, just talking about energy is one thing, but talking to electricity is another thing. It's even mm. complicated. It's not easy to understand. Mm. All we get from the bill is kilowatt hour. But if we <laughs> look at the <laughs> whole picture of electricity, yep. it's kilowatt hour, it's power rating, it's all of those stuff. So yep. how are we, uh, you know, people who understand it, how we can bring those in simpler terms so we can uh, make those uh, more understanding, uh, understandable to them and accessible to them to understand. So that's what Energy Lab's doing as well, is we try to uh, bring those uh, climate change issues or other terms that are more complicated to simpler terms so that people can understand the message of what is clean energy and what are the benefits and what are the uh, uh, things that still prevent people from not using it. Uh, so like, for example, like about the rooftop solar, for example, people might not understand about return investment after all. <laughs> Yep. You just want to install solar and uh, maybe all they heard was, I'm going to get energy for free for the last, for the next 10, 10, 10, 10 years, for example, but they don't, might not understand like, you know, the calculations to do return investment, how much money they get it back after they install it the first time and then uh, so on and so forth. So I think it's still a lot of work to do, but I think we, we are on the way there to yeah. get yeah. more people interested about it and uh more aware of the uh, of these things and uh, ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. A, a very honest question. Uh, I think that there should be uh, a, a help from the media, from media point of view. I myself, I think that I have we haven't done much to help promote this. But to you, from from your very frank opinion, have we done enough to help? Or you want to have something to request the media out there to help uh, in promoting awareness among the people? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, the electricity landscapes, especially with the clean energy or energy transition is very interesting. It's getting more and more media's attentions to get it out there, get to people who, who, who are interested in reading this stuff. And yeah. uh, I actually, in I've been doing some workshops with the medias and I think they, they are taking on on this stuff, but I think they will we need to pick up the speed a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I would encourage the media to actually pick on more of this article, but I think they are doing it, but we just yep. need to pick up the pace and we'll, Thank you. we'll, we'll try it out together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's just like you, like you mentioned, uh, they, they're interested in it, but I think in terms of difficulty, they are my encounter. They have encountered uh, something like that uh, difficult term and, and it becomes seasonal when reporting it. So there's, there's a problem with them. So hopefully they will have, uh, they, they gain more interest in doing more report on renewable energy, hopefully. Thank you for your part. Back to board down. Uh, I think uh, you mentioned a lot about this, about uh, the impact of hydro. And then uh, we talk about why is, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, in terms of integrating renewable energy, not renewable, sorry, the clean energy is really uh, Require the commitment from the government and so on. But this is a uh, this is a the, the last thing I want you to to talk about it because we all run out of time now. Uh, your your message to uh, people, to policymaker, to those stakeholder who are out there. Then uh, what would be your suggestion to them 
to uh, uh, at least ac accelerate the process of energy transition to clean energy in the future. Uh, anything you want to share? And after that, I will back to Falcon again. Uh, well, so first, every I think the most important aspect is the, the mindset. You know, um, everyone has a role. Yeah. And climate change environment is on the radar. It's centered to almost everything connected like to life, social and political aspect and stuff. Yeah. So for those, the many of those individual citizens yeah. who used to believe that it's not your role to change anything in the energy production or consumption, uh, you, you have to change that thinking, that kind of thinking. For example, if you are uh, a Mekong River community in, in, in some bowl in Croce, you will be relocated soon if the dam happens. Yeah, that is one of the things. If you are a community living next to the coal, uh, coal power plant, then you are in trouble. So you, you have to start thinking or, or helping the government, the policy maker, how we can uh, produce electricity, starting from your group or community. Maybe you have a small stream or you have a very uh, strong wind in your area or, you know, sunshine over your rooftop. Start thinking about that. You can join that. And then I also uh, 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 send my message to the policymaker that, uh, um, well, people like me or Park Kun, we are not necessarily your enemy, you know. We we are co-developing our society, right? At least from the energy aspect. So you may be very confident on what you're doing now that it is the right way, but please open your mind and see that we also have a supporting role if we are having a, 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 the, 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 the collective, I believe that we have a collective vision in terms of uh, 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 well-being of the people and the society, then we have a shared vision. Yeah. Only we are advocating from different angles. So just yeah. open mind and be transparent and accountable. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Adam. Uh, very, very uh, important take on this, and I, I, I agree with you. Uh, before I back to Falcon, I, I think uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of discussions about this as well, and and, and increasing uh, knowledge on on this issue like climate change and uh, energy issue among young people have seen so. But the problem is that uh, we we tend to think that we are too small too minimal to make a difference or to take part in this. How can we, we, we contribute to uh, a solution to deal with, for example, like climate change is a strand boundary, is a global issue that requires all countries to take part. So to Paul Kun, as uh, you engage with the youth, you, you're working on promoting awareness. So you might have uh, some, something in mind, for example, like how we encourage, or at least to change this kind of perception among our people, youth, why they should think differently. We are not too small. We have something to do. We have something to share, to take part at least together to make a, a difference in terms of energy usage, in terms of reducing carbon footprint, uh, so on and so forth. Falcon, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Well, <laughs> that's, that's a question I'm waking up every day and asking myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, in my opinion, knowledge is powerful yeah. and it's one thing, but sharing the right knowledge, the right message is another, is another thing. And I think right now we, you know, from this session's reflection, thank you, Bonnie, say for organizing, I think we harness some knowledge about clean energy and what we can do as a citizen, uh, Cambodian citizen, or global citizen, if you let me, is to amplify this message, yeah. to let the world know that if we, even though it's a small country, but we have a voice too to amplify this kind of message, to let the, the the people know that clean energy is is good. It's 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 at the end of the day, you want your air to be clean, you want your environment to be sustainable and and good to live. So let's you know let's let's not just harness this knowledge, but share this knowledge to the people, the friends, the, to people that don't understand this kind of thing. I think it's, it's, it's one way that you can do. And I think that it's, it's one way that we can tackle this problem together too. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you, uh, Paul Kun. I think uh, 
I forgot to, to, to mention that there are some people commenting on the page uh, asking the question. If you don't mind, I think uh, you, 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 you would want to take uh, one or two of them, I think. Uh, if you're fine, I will raise the question. I really, really sorry to our, to our viewer because I, I didn't uh, have time to, to look at the comment and, 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 and on the section. So for, for our speaker, we, we are running out of time, but if you are fine with the question, I think five minutes more is fine for you. That's fine. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. So, so I, uh, first, first question, I think we already touched upon it. Uh, will, will small scale hydropower make sense for lowering uh, greenhouse gas emission? I think from one hour viewer, she just uh, commented it 14 uh, minutes ago. So uh, anyone uh, of you want to, to share the, the, the answer to our uh, audience here? A small scale hydropower, I think uh, Dom already made some statement on it make sense for lowering greenhouse gas emission? Well, um, well, just a bit out, out of the box. Yeah. Uh, the question, uh, out of the question a little bit. It's like anything that, uh, I mean, almost everything that you, in terms of a technology like that, as I mentioned, it, it uh, creates impact, but it depends on how many you do it and then whether you do it at the right location, the right time. And if you compare um, with the, um, the bigger scale, like it's not only in terms of how much uh, 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 greenhouse gas emission you produce from a particular technology, but it's also to do with the, the, uh, how, the how this technology is uh, a government. The smaller one, as I mentioned, the most interesting thing for it, not only yeah. it's, it has a, a lower, very much lower uh, uh, um, level of um, carbon emission, but also it's owned by the local community. Yeah. So, I mean, this kind of, the, 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 the impact of climate change or environment, the one who immediately impact by it is the local community. That is the thing. It's quite different from you produce a big power plant where the producer is not necessarily the one who living in the community. That is totally a different, different uh, 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 things. So yeah, this is uh, adding to the, obviously it's lowering, much lowering the carbon emission, or at least it, it slow down. You know, it, this kind of emission is increasing every day, every second. But by you do by doing the smaller one, less polluted one, you basically slowing down. I cannot say we won't increase. So that's why the globally we are looking forward to not from let's say one point two to one point five or, or two point uh, uh, degree in the next let's say thirty or fifty years. Okay, thank you. One last question to Paul Kun. I think uh, he want to know. If I, I got his question right, he want to know the safety issue of solar installations. If you if you have anything to share about it, is there any problem in, related to safety issue when it comes to solar installations, Paul Kun? Thank you for more the questions. I just visited a solar installation yesterday, actually, <laughs> and <laughs> That's I great. Um, I can make sure that it's safe. Yeah. Uh, it, I'm not sure like what kind of safety aspect he, he's talking about. Not yeah, sure if yeah. the aspects of installing the solar itself or after installing it. Maybe because on the after roof? you from yeah. the roof, <laughs> yeah. I think it's it's pretty safe. It's it's okay. it's follow the standard. And yeah. I think what after the installation is maintenance and repair because the dust may you know be on the the panel of the glass. So you need to uh, have a regular maintenance uh, going yeah. on there. But other than that, I th I think it's it's pretty safe to use. Yeah. yeah, and it's yeah no direct uh, CO two emission. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Welcome and bon dom. I think the, this is the end of our conversation, and I really really thank to our two speaker for take for taking time. Oh, sorry for taking time and joins our discussion today. It's a very interesting topic on hydro, and I I believe that our viewer here uh, understand much more about how this work and and what is the impacts of hydropower on different aspects of our life, especially on environments and social uh, issue and so on. And 
uh, we also bring a lot of information and knowledge on renewable and clean energy uh, because our expert here have been working on this and relentlessly to make sure that people understand and, and, and join. And next topic, I would say we'll bring uh, more knowledge on climate change and uh, energy related issue, but, but focusing on more only on, uh, on renewable, particularly like solar, understanding solar, or understanding uh, uh, wind power and so on. So, so I hope to see you all again next time and very pleased to, to have you in our next conversation and, and how you will also hope the same. So uh, I think that's all for our conversation. So uh, I will mention you all in our comment section in case uh, our viewer want to have more uh, explanation on any particular issue related to energy. So uh, hopefully they will bring more questions to you all. Thank you, Pakun. Thank you, Wondam, for your time. Again, uh, reflection is really thankful and I really appreciate your, your participation. Thank you so much and you were as well. So see you in the next session. Thank you. I'm here too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay.